January 26, St. Polycarp, Bishop, Martyr. St. Polycarp was one of the most famous of the little group of early bishops known as the Apostolic Fathers, who, being the immediate disciples of the Apostles, received instruction directly from them. Polycarp was a disciple of St. John the Evangelist and was respected by the faithful to the point of profound veneration. We are told that one day Polycarp met at Rome the heretic Marcion in the street, who, resenting the fact that the bishop did not take notice of him, which he expected, said, Do you not know me? Yes, answered the saint, I know you, the firstborn of Satan. These were the words of a saint, most loving and most charitable, and especially noted for his compassion to sinners. He hated heresy, because he loved God and man so much. It is said that St. Polycarp kissed the chains of St. Ignatius when he passed in Smyrna on the road to his martyrdom, and Ignatius in turn recommended to him the care of his distant church in Antioch. Polycarp undertook a journey to Rome to confer with the Pope about certain points, especially about the time of keeping Easter, for the Asiatic churches differed from others in this matter. The Pope could not persuade Polycarp nor Polycarp the Pope, so it was agreed that both might follow their custom without breaking the bonds of charity. The Pope, to testify his respect, asked him to celebrate the Eucharist in his own papal church. In the year 167, a persecution broke out in Smyrna. When the chief of police, Herod, sent horsemen by night to surround his lodging, Polycarp was above stairs in bed, but refused to make his escape, saying, God's will be done. He went down, met them at the door, ordered them supper, and desired only some time for prayer before he went with them. This granted, he began his prayer standing, which he continued for two hours, recommending to God his own flock and the whole church with such intense devotion that some of those who had come to seize him repented of their errand. They set him on an ass and were conducting him towards the city when he was met on the road by Herod and Herod's father, who took him into their chariot and endeavored to persuade him to some show of compliance. What harm, they urged, is there in saying, Lord Caesar? or even offering incense to escape death. The word Lord, however, was not as innocent as it sounded and implied a recognition of the divinity of the emperor. The bishop at first was silent, but being pressed, he gave them a resolute answer. I am resolved not to do what you counsel me. At these words, they thrust him out of the chariot with such violence that his leg was bruised by the fall. The holy man went forward cheerfully to the place where the people were assembled. Upon his entering it, a voice from heaven was heard by many, Be strong, Polycarp, and play the man. He was led to the tribunal of the proconsul, who exhorted him to have regard for his age, to swear by the genius of Caesar, and to say, Away with the atheists, meaning the Christian. The saint, turning towards the crowd of ungodly people in the stadium, said with a stern countenance, Away with the atheists. The proconsul repeated, swear by the genius of caesar and i will discharge you revile christ polycarp replied four score and six years i have served him and he hath done me no wrong how then can i blaspheme my king and my savior if you require of me to swear by the genius of caesar as you call it hear my free confession i am a christian and if you desire to learn the doctrines of christianity appoint a time and hear me the proconsul said persuade the people the martyr replied I address myself to you, for we are taught to give due honor to princes so far as is consistent with religion. But before these people I cannot justify myself. Indeed, rage had rendered them incapable of hearing. The proconsul threatened, I have wild beasts. Call for them, replied the saint, for we are unalterably resolved not to change from good to evil. It is only right to pass from evil to good. The proconsul said, If you despise the beasts, I will cause you to be consumed by fire. Polycarp answered, You threaten me with a fire which burneth for a season, and after a little while is quenched. But you are ignorant of the judgment to come and the fire of everlasting punishment which is prepared for the wicked. Why do you delay? Bring against me what you please. Whilst he said this and many other things, he appeared in a transport of joy and confidence, and his countenance shone with a certain heavenly grace, insomuch that the proconsul himself was struck with admiration. However, he ordered a crier to announce three times in the middle of 
of the stadium, Polycarp hath confessed himself a Christian. At this the whole multitude gave a great shout, This is the teacher of Asia, the father of the Christians, the destroyer of our gods, who teaches the people not to sacrifice or to worship. They appeared to Philip the governor to lay lion loose upon Polycarp. He told them it was not in his power, because he had brought the sports to a close. Then they all, heathen and Jews, clamored that he should be burnt alive. Their demand was no sooner granted than every one ran with all speed to fetch wood from the bath furnaces and workshops. The pile being ready, Polycarp put off his clothes and made to remove his shoes. He had not done this before, because the faithful already sought the privilege of touching his flesh. The executioners would have nailed him to the stake, but he said, Suffer me to be as I am. He who gives me grace to endure the fire will enable me to remain at the pile unmoved. Then he looked up to heaven and prayed. He had scarce said amen when the fire was set to the pile. But behold, a wonder, the flames forming themselves like sails of a ship swelled with the wind, gently encircling the body of the martyr which stood in the middle resembling not burning flesh but the bread that is being baked or a precious metal refined and there was a fragrance like the smell of incense the order was given that polycarp should be pierced with a spear which was done and a dove came forth in such quantity of blood as to quench the fire the proconsul was advised not to give up the body to the christians lest said he abandoning the crucified man they should worship polycarp the Jews suggested this, not knowing, say the authors of the letter, that we can never forsake Christ, nor worship any other. For him we worship as the Son of God, but we love the martyrs and his disciples and imitators for the great love they bore for their King and Master. If we love Jesus Christ, we shall love the church and hate heresy, which rends his mystical body and destroys the souls for which he died. Like St. Polycarp, we shall maintain our constancy in the faith by loves of Jesus Christ, who is its author and its finisher.